Hey everyone, so the minute an episode ends, everyone starts talking about the next one. So let's get into the episode 2 preview and talk about what's going to happen next. So our preview begins with Bronzion Royce telling John that the Targaryen cannot be trusted. So piecing together what we learned last episode, we know that John is looking for Dragonglass and Sam, much to everyone's frustration, forgot that Dragonglass was on Dragonstone. But after stealing some restricted books, he rediscovers that it was and writes John. So it seems that John is planning on heading to Dragonstone to get some Dragonglass and perhaps to forge an alliance with Danny while he's at it. Now, regarding the Dragonglass, some people pointed out to me that Davos was on Dragonstone as well, and he should have also known that there was Obsidian there. Yes, that's most certainly true, but honestly, lots of people should have figured this out. Obsidian is volcanic glass, and this fact is not exactly a secret, or at least it hasn't been for thousands of years. Humanity has been gathering obsidian from volcanic areas since the Stone Age for weapons, jewelry, scalpels, you name it. And Dragonstone, at least in the books, is a famously volcanic island. Its volcanic makeup was known for being a place to hatch dragon eggs. So yes, Sam's discovery of the home of obsidian on Dragonstone is all quite silly. Now, Bronzion Royce's statement that the Targaryen cannot be trusted is a bit ironic as Jon in the show is himself a Targaryen. And the statement actually reveals something else in the plot, that Bran has not yet arrived at Winterfell and has not told Jon about his parents. I cannot think of any reason that Bran would keep this a secret. So it looks as though we can expect Jon to leave Winterfell for Dragonstone and just miss Bran who will be probably returning soon. Now, right now in the show, they seem to have given Bronzeon the role of bad advice guy. His suggestion that Carhold and the Last Hearth should be destroyed was pretty ridiculous, and now he's saying not to trust Danny. Regardless, in both situations, he was promptly ignored, which should irk him. It should be noted that Royce doesn't really have any reason to be up here in the North. Robin Aaron wanted to help Sansa retake her home, and that job is done. And the Vale Knights have not really been rewarded with anything. At least, not Carhold or the Last Hearth. We have no idea what happened to the Dreadfort, by the way. And on top of this, Littlefinger, Royce's ally, is essentially the voice of Robin Aaron, and he seems to be getting crapped on by everybody. And Sansa, the very person they came to help, is being marginalized as well. I do wonder if eventually the logic will catch up to the plot and the Vale armies will bail on Jon. Next in King's Landing, we seem to have Cersei addressing various lords about the Danny problem. Now, before the season started, I got a lot of questions from people about how Cersei could possibly win considering Danny is so incredibly overpowered. And making an argument for Cersei, I said that she has some advantages in that she has the castles, the armor, the superior fighting techniques, and the rallying power of being invaded. So last episode, Jaime said that Cersei controls three kingdoms at best. By three kingdoms, he means the Westerlands, the Riverlands, and the Stormlands, plus the Crownlands. And at best, he means that the Alliance is shaky. These kingdoms, though, may find a new sense of unity, knowing that the Dothraki and the Unsullied are coming to rape and pillage their people. And it definitely looks like Cersei is playing that card. She even calls Danny the Mad King's daughter, to cast her in a bad light. So next we have a shot of the Greyjoy fleet at night. We know from the trailer that there's going to be some sort of sea battle involving the Greyjoys. And we also know from the last episode that Euron declared that he's going to bring a gift to Cersei. Now, Danny is really overpowered, and so plot-wise, she does kind of need a blow against her to even the odds. I'm guessing that Euron is going to destroy a sizable part of Danny's fleet. And although destroying Danny's fleet would be a great gift, Euron says he won't return until he has a gift for her. The implication is that this gift would be more physical. And we'll talk in a second about what or whom this gift might be. And so next we find the Danny Alliance all collected in one place. We have Varys, Grey Worm, Missandei, Tyrion, Danny, Yara, Ilaria, and Theon. And over in the chair, we have the Queen of Thorns. Here Yara is claiming that they should attack King's Landing immediately. And this seems like a really, really, really good idea. I say this because food and water should be a huge issue for Danny unless she's getting it shipped over from the Reach. That said, Jamie and Cersei said they were specifically going to attack the Reach because it's the main food source of the kingdoms. So when this happens, Danny is going to be cut off from food, and Dragonstone seems pretty barren. Yes, they can fish, but fresh water is going to be a problem. Now Yara's suggestion to attack King's Landing seems like a no-brainer. Stannis had a much smaller force than Danny and no dragons, and he nearly won on the Blackwater. 
That said, none of the trailer images show King's Landing in battle, so it's going to be interesting to see what reasoning the show uses for them not attacking King's Landing. It may be that Cersei has most of her forces in King's Landing or attacking the Reach, and Danny thinks that a better target like Casterly Rock is for the taking. So next we see forces leaving Winterfell, which supports the idea that Jon is heading to Dragonstone to get some dragonglass. And then next we have a wolf barking at Arya. Now this seems like it's probably Nymeria, Arya's lost wolf from season one, and I'm not sure why, but the wolf seems too small. That said, wolf sizes have been all over the place in the show, so we should probably just accept that it's Nymeria. Now it should be noted that in the books, Nymeria has been collecting a massive pack of regular wolves that have been terrorizing the Riverlands around the base of the Trident. She actually hasn't gone very far from where she was originally lost. Now this is relevant as there is a question to which way Arya is heading. Arya told Jock and Hagar that she was going home, but instead she went and pursued a name on her death list. Next, she runs into Lannister men who also just want to go home, but she says she's going to kill the Queen, a person on her death list. So thematically, the Arya story is kind of torn, and we can't really trust what Arya is saying. Is she pursuing her death list, or is she returning home? On the one hand, I can't imagine Arya taking out Cersei, not at this point in our story. At the same time, Nymeria popping up makes it seem like she's still heading south, to the base of the Trident, towards King's Landing. That said, it looks like there's some snow on some of these trees, so maybe she's heading north? But then again, the show is so messed up with weather that it's really hard to read into that. Arya and the Hound were roughly in the same area last episode, and she had very little snow and he was in a blizzard, so who knows? Next, we have a really quick action shot with what appears to be Tyene Sand. This seems like it might be part of Euron's attack. Now again, Euron declared that he was going to get a gift for Cersei, and I do think that capturing Ilaria and any of the Sand Snakes would be a friggin' fantastic gift. Ilaria and the Sand Snakes killed Cersei's daughter, and them as hostages would cripple any ability for Dorne to retaliate against the Iron Throne. Plot-wise, it's a blow against Danny that's needed in our story. Next, we get a quick shot of Sansa looking out somewhere. Now, yes, most scenes with Sansa have to do with Littlefinger harassment, but I do wonder if this shot is her looking out and seeing Bran returning to Winterfell. I'm not really sure what the show is planning to do with the Sansa character. They've been teasing Dark Sansa for three years now, and we've even gotten a little more of this with Sansa claiming admiration for Cersei in the last episode. She's been having a lot of turmoil with Jon, and having that go nowhere would be deeply unsatisfying. But at the same time, could there really be a Stark Civil War with Bran's return on the horizon? Both Bran and Jon would be harping about the Night's King, and that would be two against one, really. It would be tough for Sansa to go against both of them. Next, we have the Ilaria Yara kiss from the trailer. Now, time has been fairly elusive these past few seasons, so it's hard to say if these two have gotten to know each other and are now in a relationship. Perhaps this is a fling or a random good luck kiss, or perhaps there's more to it and it'll affect things if one or both of them are captured by Euron. Now they've put Danny and Varys turning around as if they're in the same room as Yara and Ilaria, but I question this. The lighting with Yara and Ilaria could put them anywhere, including the Euron battle scene. But most importantly, Danny is finally, finally, finally talking to Varys, and this is of course huge. Varys tried to poison Danny first season, and Jorah was exiled for spying for Varys. It's going to be very difficult for Varys to explain away his actions. Was the poison fake, or was Jorah always part of the plan to stop it from the beginning so there was no real danger? We really need an answer for this, and I hope the show doesn't gloss over it. And our final shot is Jon strangling Littlefinger. So Jon and Littlefinger have actually never spoken. And there is some thematic balance here with Jon and Littlefinger on one side, and Danny and Varys on the other the two classic protagonists, and the two great schemers. It's anyone's guess on what set Jon off here? Perhaps a discussion about Sansa? Perhaps a discussion about Lyanna? They are at her tomb. Or perhaps Littlefinger's role in stopping Ned's coup has come to light. Though I think if that actually came to light, Littlefinger would be dead. If I were to guess, Jon is catching on that Littlefinger is trying to divide Jon and Sansa? Or simply Littlefinger said something disparaging about Ned? What's sort of sad is I kind of sense that Littlefinger's days are numbered. He seemed such the confident master planner in the first few seasons, and now he seems to be spinning his wheels and failing to manipulate Sansa. I'm not sure if the show knows what to do with him anymore. 
in a world of dragons and zombies, are behind the scenes schemers really very relevant? And that's all for the preview. We will see you next time and thanks for watching.